how did a burglar with over 400 break-ins to his name graduate to become one of Britain's most evil? Keep watching as I investigate Donald Nielsen, a.k.a. the Black Panther. Donald Nielsen's story begins on 1st of August 1936, born as Donald Nappy. He changed his last name after his daughter's birth so that she would not experience the bullying he suffered at school due to his last name. As a child, Nielsen suffered tragedy at a young age. At 10 years old, his mother passed away from breast cancer at age 33. Eight years later, he married 20-year-old Irene Tate in April 1955 and following a period of serving as a national serviceman in Kenya, Aden and Cyprus within the King's own Yorkshire Light Infantry Unit, in 1958, his wife persuaded him to leave the army. Nielsen displayed signs that he was in for a lifetime of crime and started extremely young within his criminal career. A year after his mother died of breast cancer, he was caught shoplifting in 1948. This was the beginning of over 400 house burglaries that he would commit without getting caught. Once he became a legal adult at the age of 18, he was already a veteran burglar. And as he matured, so did his crimes. Once he started stealing firearms, his criminal activity evolved into armed robbery, targeting post offices between 1971 and 1974. Each time, his violence would become worse and worse. One such example was in February 1972, breaking into a post office during the night. The post office was part of a private home belonging to Leslie Richardson, who was the postmaster and his wife. They woke up to find Nielsen in their bedroom. Richardson tried to fend off Nielsen as his wife was calling the police for help. The postmaster was a proper badass though. Nielsen, in a fake accent, warned Richardson that the firearm was loaded. Richardson saw that the firearm was aimed towards the ceiling. So in response, he was like, well, we'll find out if it's loaded or not then. And then pulled the trigger himself, blasting two big ass holes in the ceiling. Soldier. Proper badassery behaviour there from the local postmaster himself, right? His bravery in the face of such evil, though, came to an end quite swiftly. As they tussled with each other, Nielsen ended up viciously stamping on Richardson's feet, breaking numerous toes and kneed him right in the groin area, causing Richardson to collapse onto the floor. Nielsen was able to use this opportunity to escape. However, when it came time to provide the police with a description of the intruder, Richardson was unable to provide accurate details of what Nielsen looked like. It wouldn't be long, though, until Nielsen was on the radar of authorities. Nowadays, you would be hard-pressed to find a burglar who could commit over 400 break-ins without getting caught by the police. But back in Nielsen's day, it was extremely easy. All he had to do was change his behaviour and pattern of what he would steal on a regular basis. As soon as he was getting clocked on by the police, he would then change his behaviour to something else. During his burglary career, he was known as the Phantom and Handy Andy, but it wasn't until later that he would become infamous as the Black Panther. Nielsen would soon graduate from burglar to killer. Using a 2-2 LR pistol, Nielsen murdered his first victim in February 1974 when during a post office robbery in Harrogate, North Yorkshire, he shot dead Donald Skepper. He was going to kill again. It was only a matter of when. After taking a life of another man for the very first time, later on that year, he would go on to kill two others. Derek Aston in Baxenden, Lancashire in September 1974 and Sidney Greyland in Langley, West Midlands in November 1974. News of these extremely violent crimes began to reach the media. Astin's widow, Marion Astin, went on TV and during an interview described her husband's killer as so quick he was like a panther. 
Nielsen always wore black clothing when he committed these depraved acts of violence. So putting that together with Aston's widow's description, the reporter would christen Nielsen into criminal historical infamy and end his report by asking one simple question. Where is the Black Panther? The media and the police didn't know it yet, but within the next six months, the Black Panther would commit his most savage murder yet, involving a child. Leslie Whittle was born in 1957 as the daughter of coach business owner George Whittle. It became public knowledge that George Whittle had left his entire fortune to his family, including Leslie. But as ever, with wills and money, when there are lots of it, then lots of arguments usually follow, and this family was no different. After finding out about the Whittle family fortune dispute, the Black Panther decided to get in on the action and claim some of this fortune as his own. Reportedly, it took him three years to plan this vile and sickening act that would send shockwaves up and down Britain. Leslie Whittle was 17 years old when she fell into the clutches of the Black Panther. In January 1975, the Black Panther broke into the Whittle home in Highly Shropshire and kidnapped Leslie from a bedroom, leaving a note demanding a ransom totaling £50,000. The Whittle family were more than happy to pay up, but due to circumstances that included a number of mistakes made by the police, they were unable to deliver the ransom as instructed by the Black Panther. Unfortunately, with the ransom not being paid, Leslie's fate was sealed and her lifeless body was found a couple of months later in March 1975 in Bathpool Park in Staffordshire. She was found hanging from a wire at the bottom of the drainage shaft where he had tethered her. The post-mortem examination showed that Leslie had actually died from vagal inhibition rather than strangulation. That means that the shock of the fall actually caused her heart to stop and this is what caused her death. The pathologist found that Leslie weighed 98 pounds when she was found with her stomach and intestines completely empty concluding that she had not eaten for a minimum of three days. This suggests that Leslie could have been in that dark hellhole for a couple of months before she passed away. The circumstances surrounding Leslie's death is still a mystery even today. Some theories believe the Black Panther had pushed her off the ledge where he kept her. Others state that the Black Panther may not have been present when she passed away and that when he came back to where he was hiding her and found her dead, at that point, he panicked and fled. With the net closing in on him, it was not long until the Black Panther would find himself caged behind bars. In December 1975, two police officers named Tony White and Stuart McKenzie noticed a man trotting along but looking slightly dodgy. McKenzie asked him over to question him, but what they did not know was that they were about to come face to face with the lethal Black Panther himself. The Black Panther explained he was on his way home from work, but then took out a firearm and instructed White to go into the back of the police car. The Black Panther sat in the passenger seat, digging the firearm into Mackenzie, demanding that he start driving. It was Mackenzie's cool demeanour and quick thinking that saved his colleagues and his own lives. He started to jerk the car left and then jerk it right and then brake suddenly, which caused the Black Panther to drop his firearm. The firearm discharged, it hit white. Mackenzie, meanwhile, got the hell out of the vehicle, banging his head on the road as he did and proceeding to stagger towards the nearby fish and chip shop, yelling for help. Two customers from the fish and chip shop noticed the violent event occurring and without hesitation, they ran towards the danger. In a selfless act, they became heroes as they helped take down the Black Panther himself. The Black Panther took a mighty blow to the neck as he was being restrained and then handcuffed. With the Black Panther safely in custody, the prosecutors would begin making their case against him. At Oxford Crown Court, the Black Panther's defence lawyer, Gilbert Gray QC, argued that Leslie Whittle had accidentally fallen from the ledge and as a result died from this accident. 
trying to argue the humanity of the Black Panther. His lawyer further argued that Nielsen looked after Leslie by feeding her chicken soup, spaghetti, meatballs, fish and chips, chicken legs, and even polo mints. Prosecution, though, called BS on all of that. However, the evidence showed that found in the shaft by the police where Leslie was kept, he did provide her with a sleeping bag, mattresses, survival blankets and bags, bottles of brandy, six paperback books, a copy of the Times newspaper, two magazines and a small puzzle. However, a monster will always be a monster. And in July 1976, Nielsen, aka the Black Panther, was found guilty of the kidnapping and murder of Leslie Whittle. Three weeks later, he was also convicted of the murders of the two postmasters, plus the husband of the postmistress, Derek Astin, Sidney Grayland, and Donald Skepper. When it came to sentencing, the judge, Mr. Justice Mars Jones, made sure the Black Panther would never walk the streets of Britain a free man ever again. Nielsen received five life sentences, with a further 61 years on top, plus 21 years for the kidnap of Leslie Whittle, 10 years for blackmail, 20 years for two burglary charges when he stole firearms, and 10 years for possessing a firearm with an intent to endanger life. On the 17th of December 2011, Nielsen was suffering from breathing difficulties and was taken from Norwich Prison to Norwich University Hospital, but died the next day, bringing to an end the life of the notorious Black Panther. He may have started out as a petty thief, but he died a monstrous killer, making him one of Britain's most evil. If you liked this and want more, then make sure you subscribe to join our alternate tribe, like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until the next time, you guys, laters.